Are you looking to level up your author business? Are you pounding your head against a wall, wondering what your next step should be? Then join me, Daniel Wilcox. And me, Sasha Black, as we haul ass each week in a bid to level up. Level up. Come along for the ride as we delve deep into the business of writing, craft, entrepreneurship, and every level of the author journey. This is the Next Level Author Podcast. Hello Achievers and welcome to episode number 36 of the Next Level Author Podcast, a podcast where we hold each other to account and track our step-by-step progress as we level up our author business. But who is we, you may be asking. And if you don't know, after 36 episodes, I'm going to be very surprised. (laughs) My name is Daniel Wilcox and here with me every week is... Sasha Black. Hey Sasha, how's it going? Hey. Uh, Wow. (laughs) It's a loaded question. Yeah. But I have no other way to ask it. I have had better weeks I will be honest so I don't when did we record last was it last Friday uh September yeah cool awesome so I don't think I have mentioned what happened this week okay so Monday was my son's birthday 30th of November was my son's birthday and um so we woke up we got ready for school we started opening Christmas presents and then I got a text from somebody in my family that said they had COVID (laughs) And we had seen said family member on Friday because obviously it was my son's birthday and also they are in our immediate support bubble in terms of childcare. Um, So that meant that my son was not actually going to school despite having gotten dressed for school. And it meant that we are all in quarantine and have been and have not left the house since that day. In fact, because we hadn't gone anywhere over the weekend, we actually haven't left the house since last Friday. So a whole week we've all been trapped in this house. And um, basically what that did to me was, uh, we all know (laughs) that I had a few blood pressure issues earlier in the year and it caused a very serious spike in blood pressure and it caused me to put my back out, my neck out. And uh, yeah, basically I got massively stressed because I can't, really cope with these very spontaneous very sudden oh now you have to homeschool for a week on top of running a business and making sure you feed everybody three times a day and cleaning your house and all the other stuff so I got very stressed and basically my body put me on my ass which has never happened before and I got such a severe headache I had dizzy spells my temperature spiked and we weren't sure whether or not those were covid um symptoms so for a while everybody else was in other rooms and I was in the bedroom and uh but it's fine you know I am fine I've not developed a cough the the temperature was just one night and I'm pretty sure that it was exhaustion uh it was exhaustion burnout um stress and my body just was like no bitch go lie down so that's what <laughs> I had to do and I was in a dark room for most of a day And then yesterday I couldn't do anything. And after I'm done with this, I've got one meeting this evening, but that's it. I'm not doing anything all day because um, I wouldn't say I'm exhausted. Like I don't, I I feel like right now I don't feel tired. Like I felt tired on Wednesday. I don't, I don't feel tired as, as such, but I definitely feel empty and hollowed out. And like there is, I don't, no creativity and I don't know like yesterday I had some sparks I had some ideas that I wanted to write down I had a few like paragraphs coming to me for different stories but I went to write them down and I was just like I just don't want to so I didn't and um, yeah so it's a problem and it's a problem basically I'm not coping very well anymore with the spontaneous lock-ins and disruptions to my working pattern I mean sorry I will let you talk in a second um like basically from March uh my son was off school and then obviously we moved house so we couldn't get him into a school in this because in the UK we had I think it was like the final five or six weeks of school term where the kids went back to school but because we had moved house we couldn't get him into a school they wouldn't allow us in um and 
so he was off school until the middle of September, he missed the beginning of school. And then since the middle of September, he's had three other weeks off school, one where somebody got COVID in his year group, one because it was a holiday school break week. And then obviously again this week. So he's actually not been in school very much at all this year. And I just, I'm not coping really at all anymore. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm done joking about it and laughing about it. I'm not really, I haven't really got a sense of humor about it anymore. It's very hard for me to lose my sense of humor. So yeah, basically I need a fucking break need a fucking holiday and um I'm done with this COVID bullshit okay okay hey honey how are you hey to be fair the the fact that you you've come so far with it anyway I think I've, I've said this before a lot of people probably would have broken sooner um but you wouldn't let yourself so the fact that your body's like just now saying that you need a rest I think is long overdue um but also it is one of those years where you know a lot of stuff does get thrown at people some more than others and like there's nothing else you can really do but keep trying to plug along because particularly in our kind of businesses when you're full-time you, you don't have an option a lot of the time you just have to work through it um so yeah I think it'd be interesting to <laughs> go through we're on episode 36 I think it'd be interesting to count how many episodes where we're actually like both fully energized from this year because <laughs> we keep saying about this like we speak quite a lot every day on zoom and stuff but it's usually one of us carrying the other and yeah. on the one or two days where we're both fried they are terrible days indeed they are so fucking bad <laughs> just like i think we've had like, like three or four where staring we're... <laughs> at the screen <laughs> it's like oh uh-huh. like i think we've had three or four where we've both been wrecked and they have mm-hmm. not been the best days no so we try and time them around each other we try and we try and yeah. we're so <laughs> considerate <laughs> <laughs> it works well um but yeah my week has been Busy as fuck, sunshine. You moved house. Moved house. So pretty much last Thursday was my last working day because I got to the point where I just didn't have the energy to write and I was also thinking of all the different move stuff. So I was like, right, I'm going to have to just take the rest of Thursday or Friday to finish all the packing, make sure I had everything in order, blah, 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 blah. You say that like it's like an unusual thing. Like most people have to take quite a bit of time off when they move, you know. You shut your goddamn mouth. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and uh saturday and sunday i spent all of saturday with uh my boy spending time with him before i moved and then also sunday morning and also friday afternoon slash evening after he got back from work so i just still i still had a good time uh, amount of time with him before i left and then obviously monday was the move tuesday was unpacking loads of boxes just being exhausted all that kind of stuff wednesday was the same yesterday was the same and now we're here so i still have managed to get nine thousand words in this week which I'm, <laughs> I'm very, very happy with. You're such an overachiever. It's unbelievable. Well done. Like I'm giving you a gold star right now because that is Thank impressive. You. Yep. And I've also run uh, two more days worth of boot camps, which have, like uh, those, those boot camps are really useful, obviously for the people involved, but also for me as well, because they, they give me specific times in which I then write and stuff. So mm. it's, it's a good tool for anyone to come in and, and be held accountable. But yeah, I've now got a big list of stuff that I want to get to next week. I have to... I won't say have to because I feel like that would put too much pressure on myself but I want to get a lot of work done next week to sort of get ahead for Christmas and things so I can at least afford myself a couple of days to yeah I'm going to be working like double next week because I basically got put on my ass this week and haven't really done anything so Mm -hmm. now I have to do twice as much next week in order to be able to have a week off of Christmas yay Yay! (laughs) but you know positivity let's spin this what's one thing you've enjoyed this week uh um god positivity you are brutal this week aren't you i mean Um, this is this is part of every week (laughs) this is something that you wanted included in the podcast (laughs) i was not the positive one um okay well i'm gonna cheat so there are two things that i have enjoyed this week the first one is a documentary called my octopus teacher and i'm not going to lie i sobbed because it was magical and fascinating and uh wonderful and you know it has a very bittersweet ending uh I don't want to spoil it but this guy the premise of this story is basically this guy went every day to the same patch of ocean for a year literally through winter snow sleet everything he went every single day in basically fucking freezing oceanic uh, conditions and swam without scuba gear so he just had like a snorkel and stuff in order to get closer to nature and to understand you know his his concept was that if you go to the same patch of um like earth sea whatever 
then it's only by going repeatedly over time that you then understand the the small changes which actually gives you the bigger understanding and what happened is he made friends with an octopus I'd like a genuine wild octopus and it was the most magical story and I fucking sobbed like a baby and I'm not even going to apologize because it was beautiful and you all need to go and watch it. Uh, the second thing I have enjoyed is a book called It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. This book is not the sort of thing I would normally read. It is contemporary. It is, uh, I think it, I think it's a romance. I think you class it as romance. Um, do you class it as romance? Oh, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's got, it's, it's, it is a, it's kind of a love story. It, to, to clarify, there are trigger warnings around this book. It does include domestic violence. It does include one attempted rape scene. Um, and therefore, like, if you are triggered by any of those things, I do not recommend that you read this story. If you are not triggered by those things, then I highly recommend you read this story. It was, it hooked me so violently that it was one of those books I, I remember texting my friends saying and this was about half past 11 at night going I don't actually know if I can put the book down um and I, th I think it's because the story was so pacey and the characters were fantastic like it was one of those really voicey books where you could really hear the character and they were so unique um that oh god and and there was some really awesome foreshadowing and I don't know like it was just fantastic and I haven't been gripped like that I finished it in 24 hours and it, it's like a nearly a 400 page book so that tells you how good it was because I'm not a fast reader either so yeah like if you would like um, to study characterization and like in particular character voice um I, I recommend it for for that for the protagonist anyway it was a couple of other characters that were that were voicey but the, the protagonist in particular um and also how to land a beginning because a lot of books they you know they they start with a really powerful beginning and then they just sort of fall off the edge because they can't be asked to edit all the way through uh, in the same way but um there was a tiny bit of that but it mostly the characters kept you know the quality of voice the whole way through so yeah and and also it's a really strong female character and I you know I loved the ending and I loved the message and the moral in it so yeah beautiful what about you what did you enjoy this week I can't hear you it's because I muted myself while I was clicking and doing some stuff in the background <laughs> behind the scenes uh, oh, I'm not listening to me Cheers, I was listening bitch. to every word you watched something about I don't know something and then you read a book <laughs> so my thing <laughs> I'm kidding. My octopus teacher, and I can't remember what the name of the book was. It ends with us. Ends with us. Uh, yeah, my thing. Um, I'm I'm going to go this week for the bootcamp community, um, just purely because. Uh, so obviously, for people that listen to this podcast for you know a couple of months, they would have seen when I first posted about the bootcamp, sort of um, not nervousness, but a little bit of uh, trepidation about getting it all launching and how many people are going to come in. And you know, we reached the end of Nano. Right, for, for everyone, for this will be kind of a long-standing thing for people who have been in and out of this sort of in-joke. So I'm going to say it properly for this one time on this podcast, all right? Make a gift, do whatever the hell you want with it. So we finished recently NaNoWriMo, and <laughs> <laughs> um, which obviously is like, it's a difficult challenge. It's 50,000 words written over 30 days. I had 17 people attend the boot camp and 12 of them completed. Now, for the national um pass rate for nano remo is 15 percent, and that's a 70 percent success rate for the group so for everyone that got involved and, and did it and smashed it and then there were a few people in there that didn't hit the mark but they finished their first drafts and they did awesome things so like the community itself has has been probably one of the biggest surprises for me because you know i knew i knew what it involved to lead people through zoom and to do everything else i wanted to do but I didn't really account for how strongly knit everyone would get and how friendly and how supportive and everything else behind the scenes. So I know a lot of people from that group listen to this. So if you are, then, you know, you guys smashed it and you're awesome. Um, but on top of that, I then also have taken some of them into even uh, it's another two and a half week program, which is where they're going to edit their books and go through bits and pieces. And we had our first one yesterday. And it was really interesting because in the, the November sprint, the focus is very much slam the words. Like you have a target, you all know what you're reaching for. It's just get as many words as possible. But 
afterwards now it's just a case of they can work on what they want so a lot of them are editing their books some of them are still writing the books that they started in nano but the vibes a lot more relaxed and uh, i guess diverse because there's not necessarily a measurable target for everyone but they're jumping in they're asking questions we i'm getting to hear about different people's projects and their stages and it's just it's just really like from my side it's a real sort of privilege to to have pulled this group together to be able to hear what they're working on and to be a part of their journey to to push them forward and you know for for people who you know didn't get a chance to join that group um i am looking at ways in which i can continue this into the new year i haven't put anything solidly down yet uh, but i will just say watch this space because you know there's a fantastic group of authors already getting involved in doing it if that feels like a community you want to be a part of then watch this space because i'll have more information hopefully in the next few weeks awesome uh weekly confessional i am going to move house i did that I sasha what mine was. <laughs> sasha will do her mailing list move stuff oh yeah i did that yeah yeah mailing list is all moved um i am still getting some signups through my old mailing list provider uh i think i although only a couple so i i suspect they are from people who brought my books before and obviously that's got the old link in so i have changed now i have changed three quarters of my uh books and so i it, because i'm wide i'm on like five thousand different platforms so um i have to yeah that's just gonna take some time and so i'm just gonna i'm not you know it, it because also you know when you load up they take forever to process and stuff so i'm not gonna ever get that done in one day uh, yeah. but yeah all the mailing list is done all of the uh autoresponders are done everything is set up now uh so yeah i did that so we should probably do a shout out every week to the challenge that sasha blindly set for us all last week um so the question was what have you been putting off and the challenge was what one thing you've been putting off that you want to commit to have been done by the end of <laughs> i don't know why i said it like that, <laughs> to have been done by the end of uh january so we are going to pin a post onto the facebook group for people who have already commented then transfer your comments onto that group uh, onto that post and uh, no, we'll, we'll i think we'll we'll do it so okay. we'll yeah once you've done the artwork i will uh, transfer everybody's comments and tag everybody so that we're all accountable and i'll make it a uh, uh like an announcement post so it stays yeah. at the top and that because that will then also enable us to do check-ins because i really mm -hmm. want to make this like a <laughs> like i'm a crack that whip you know yeah, so don't, I'm be don't cracking enter lightheartedly people we're going to be yeah. chasing you uh, yeah. And also just a reminder for people who are getting involved in the challenge, we are going to be picking three winners for prizes. So one of those prizes is a 30 minute coaching call with myself. One of them is a 30 minute consulting call with Sasha. And another one is a uh, signed up, uh, signed copy of the anatomy of prose um, and our challenges. So by the end of January, I'm going to give myself headspace to create my marketing, branding and social media plan. And Sasha is going to have a plan for the freebie marketing funnel for both her fiction and nonfiction. So head on over to the Facebook group to get involved in that. In Patreon news over at patreon.com forward slash next level authors. Uh, no new patrons this week, but just a reminder for the patrons that we do currently have that this, co this coming Monday, Monday the 7th, we're going to be doing another live Q&A for an hour or so. Um, it starts at 8 p.m. GMT. So mark your calendars, get involved and uh, looking forward to, to chatting with you again. The last one was really fun. It was. So get your questions prepped. Maybe we'll do an extra post in Patreon saying if they've got questions in advance. Mm, definitely. Cool. Uh, and just a little note as well that we are currently in the, the first stages of looking at our first wave of merch, which is going to be very exciting. <laughs> More information on that soon. Yeah. We have a lot of stuff in this intro now. I know. <laughs> this this episode, the intro, the intro is like as long as the fucking episode was supposed to be. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're like 20 minutes in right now uh, this week's level up is brought to you by uh carrie hardisky who says that her best friend's husband is very techie and helped her set up a new website still playing with some of the bells and whistles but got her all set up and showed her how to add things and she's very excited for it to officially launch and that i will know awesome. that that was that was uh, commented a couple of weeks ago so it might already have been launched so let us oh. know how it's going carrie comments what have you been putting off Okay, so we did have lots of comments. I'm not going to be able to get through them all. Uh, just a couple then. Faye Trask said, I'm putting off creating a business plan and quarterly goals, mostly because I'm looking to publish around the middle of the year. I'm also putting off my brand because I have an idea roughly, but no clue how to solidify it. Oh, you're going to by the end of the next couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this, I just, I am so evil. I don't know what my problem is. I just love making people accountable. So they get shit done. <laughs> yeah, guys. Anyway, 
Yanni it's says, literally good cop, bad cop. I know, I know. I love playing bad cop. I will I can always see. play bad cop. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Yanni J had said, I'm putting off getting back in the gym and getting fitter again. I'm the biggest I've ever been in my life and I've lost a ridiculous amount of confidence. I'm with Dan. I'm going to lose weight. Rianne said, making a plan to actually start treating authorship like a business and a business I can achieve. Yeah, you fucking can. (laughs) I think because I work full time and have limited non-muggle time to dedicate between all the things like exercise, seeing friends, spending time with my husband and family, reading books, writing books, etc., etc., etc. I subconsciously still treat it like a hobby. 2021 is the year this changes. I will enter the games and commit to my 90-day exercise challenge. I'll be on day 54 by January the 30th and uh, to read Business for Authors by Joanna Penn as a first step in the right direction to being an author business rather than a hobby writer. I have read that book. It was fantastic. Another one that I recommend is um, The Business of Being a Writer by Jane Friedman. And there's also quite a few really good books by um, Christine Catherine Rush um, on business. So have a look for her as well. I can uh, tell you the spelling of that, Dan, for the show notes. Yeah, we'll put all those links in the show notes for you. Yeah. So um, lots of other comments. We had uh, Chelsea Belver, Meg Jolly, Scott Kavanagh, Victoria L.K. Williams, Francesca May McMahon, uh, Kerry Hodiski, Michael Nasberg, Giorgio Doomcraft, Caribou Busiak, Edwin Downward. So I'm not going to read them all out because um, we are already <laughs> over our episode length. Thanks for joining um, us for Next Level Authors. The question yeah. is, are you breathless? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> um, so thank you to everybody. Also, just a note, uh, because of the week that both Dan and I have had in the last week, mm. neither of us have commented. Um, we can only apologise for that. We will be better. Uh, we're probably not going to go back and comment on these, but when I move everything into the uh, announcement post so that we keep it that will be another opportunity for us to then talk about um all of the the um challenges beautiful are you ready we're here we made it No. okay uh this i I will say this isn't deliberately for the week that you've had a lot of this (laughs) comes from me as well okay Uh, and this, so this question's kind of been in my mind for a long while, but I've never really gotten around to asking it. And one of the one of the big examples of this is when I had Meg Latour on the, the Great Writer Share podcast, and she'd just come off of a three or four week like rest, just like relax, just like social media rest. And my first question was literally like, how? So my question to you is, as an indie author, how do you plan for time off and rest? So there's two things. My personality type and my strengths mean that I actually gain energy from achieving things. And that's one of the things that Becca sort of gave me permission to do is that even when I'm resting, I can still achieve things and that's okay because that's part of my personality and really part of my strengths because I have not just achiever, but I have a load of other strengths that mean that that is a huge part of my desire. So like when I go away on holiday, you know, I will take like 10 or 15 books, literally 10 or 15 physical books. I actually mostly usually take an extra suitcase just for my books. Like it's really oh, wow. embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, no, like Chloe gets really cross me every year. Like you don't need to take that many books. I'm like, one word for you, Kindle. I? Yeah, no, I don't, I can't do, I can't, like I can do the Kindle, but I just really don't want to unless I have to. Um, And yeah, I think I took 16 one year and I read 14. So it wasn't like, you know, I didn't, I literally was reading like a book a day. Anyway, this is well irrelevant. The question was, how do you plan for? So when I, like when we were in a normal year, I think, was it last year or the year before? I think it was last year. I went away five times. Like I travel a lot like traveling is a fucking enormous part of how I rest and recuperate and so I just I guess before my holiday I work that bit harder to make sure I'm ahead with any freelance that I have to do and I don't actually have a lot of freelance left anymore I am probably 80 to 85 percent just working for myself now um so I make sure I'm ahead with the freelance and then I 
just have there is a bit of letting go of some of my stuff because obviously you know we set our own deadlines and therefore we can actually move our deadlines you know unless we have put pre-orders live and stuff um then we can everything is movable and in order to make sure of things like that I don't tend to put pre-orders up before I have written the book I know that's something that you do do and that's fine it's just we work in different ways but I don't do that because it always means I can move things if I have to um so that's another thing that I do um yeah and like I say I do have to do some letting go but when I know that I'm going away you know three or four times in a year um I just make sure before I go that I have done everything that I need to and that I'm ahead with freelance it is that simple and then the rest of it you just have to let go now that said there are some things that because we own our own business um I I have never and will never go away without my laptop I just won't I'm just yeah. not that sort of person yeah. that will cause me more stress than it will reduce my stress absolutely um and that is black and white and that, oh, is that makes you feel good <laughs> yeah, feel no, better. I've literally no. never been able to go away even for like a, a day or two without taking no. my laptop <laughs> uh, oh I will never do that um I can't because what if something goes wrong what if mm. um you know what I don't know there are so many when you own when you own your own business it is impossible to you can still relax and disconnect and um you know like I will always take my laptop like for example when we went to Greece I think it was it was either last year or the year before um I took my laptop and in two weeks in 16 days I think I opened it twice um but I I had to open it on those two occasions because there were things that couldn't be left and that is one of the things that you have to accept when you work for yourself is that you are the one that is there is nobody left behind in the business yes. to do yes. those things so but equally you know I do make a and Chloe also makes it very abundantly clear that when we are on holiday we are on holiday now I actually would prefer to spend an hour every morning when we're on holiday just clearing the deck so that I then don't come back to a ridiculous amount of work can't always do that and I try not to out of respect for my family because I work so many hours the rest of the time um but like I said you know because of my strengths actually sometimes I do actually derive energy pennies from just making sure that I've done some key things anyway I also get like in terms of the achievement that's why I take so many books because I'm like well I can still achieve I can like smash out reading books whilst I'm away and that then feels like an achievement as well now the other thing that I do is I uh plan in we were, I was talking about this funny enough to Chloe the other day um I was saying that a lot of the ways that I get energy is not necessarily like a holiday, uh, but is by doing things. Um, so, for example, we I ha I book things like going to abandoned underground stations for tours or surg surgical museums. <laughs> like it's really morbid, but um, you know we've been to a couple. There was one in Edinburgh, like the Surgeons Museum, and it was. <laughs> weird there were like lots of dead body parts in jars and stuff but I was fascinated by it and um, you know we went to like the John Sloan Museum and so I book I book a ton of stuff like that so it is a day away from my computer and away from work but simultaneously I'm actually getting inspiration this is feeding my well uh, my creative well and so I I really I'm really very very intentional about that and and I would say probably eight times a year we go and do stuff like that I mean I that is how often I'm booking it if not every month you know if I can I would do it every month but yeah so I I book a lot of trips sometimes it's the theatre sometimes it's museums sometimes it's weekend breaks in different cities sometime you know whatever whatever these things are I I intentionally book trips that I know will both be rejuvenating because both of us and even Atlas are away from work but also I'm going to gather ideas and inspiration just see things and obviously this year we've not done anything nothing not one thing and just in the last week I've realized how detrimental that is to me yeah. um and I am 
and I'm not surprised that I'm exhausted and burning out and that my creativity is struggling because there's, well, you know, we've done fuck all. I've seen nothing. I've taken in nothing. And um, it's a problem. It is a fucking problem. So yeah, like I, I both plan in the, the holiday type rest, but then also plan in like the activity things, which some people won't say is rest because you're doing stuff. But I actually find that it's mental that rest. Helps. It's a different, it's a different strain of, I get what you mean. Yeah. So yeah, I think, I think, does that answer the question? Yeah, I think kind of. Um, yeah, I mean, so from my side, I don't think I've ever had to. Well, I, I, <laughs> let me try that again. So mm. obviously I went full-time in this business in April, 2019. And you get the new rush of, this is full time. And like a lot of my income came from like wording through ghostwriting and you're inspired and you've got all these words like just flooding at you. And I managed to create quite a good financial buffer so that when it came to Christmases and like a couple of days off that I needed here and there, it wasn't too much of a big issue because I knew that I'd make up for it like either the following week or like I'd, I'd stack up a sort of a, a week before, like you've said, sort of giving yourself that cushion, that that amount of time in which you don't have to work as much. Because like you say, as, as a solopreneur, there's no one that you can fall back on. So even when you do take days off, even when you plan to have like, I don't think I've had, I probably had one day in this year where I've not touched anything. And that, that includes like even just going on Facebook or anything else, like one, one day in which I've not actually like touched anything to do with my business. Even when I was moving and doing bits and pieces, there was like an element of like Monday during moving day. Um, when was it? Like I parked up somewhere uh, after dropping off my keys at the agency and got a cover through for a project I'm working on. So then I had to email back the cover designer and try and like, well you didn't you didn't have to let's just be clear about that <laughs> well I didn't have to but I needed to get the project moving because it needed to launch um yeah, but you didn't have to we just like to overwork ourselves Dan. but like you say it's also that thing of like is one less thing to worry about if it's done yeah yeah because there's a constant like flood of new things that are coming and uh yeah I, I, so I don't know because because last Christmas it was easier because again most of my ghostwriting had like a good financial buffer uh, I gave myself a hiatus with great writer share. So there wasn't really anything that was demanding me uh, in terms of my attention over that time, apart from just wording and getting stuff out. And I, I, I was on, on balance with that. This year, I've given myself a lot more stuff to do and a lot more stuff in which I'm accountable for weekly. So, you know, I've got the boot camps, I've got this podcast, I've got great writer share podcast, I've got the ghost writing, I've got other projects that I'm working on. And so I'm just trying to find the, the right amount of time because i'm obviously going to ha have time off over christmas but again it's always going to be like you're anchored to your computer just in case um and i've never really been that good at forecasting and looking ahead to things i need to plan so i can take that time off but i can say that this year i've you know i've got over the next week or two about three or four different podcast recordings and i'm going to just be able to schedule over christmas for great writer share just to have done um and out the way and off, and off my mind but yeah i think it's <laughs> Like it's it's the first time ever in my life where I really had to sit down and go, okay, what am I doing over the next few weeks? What do I need to stack? What is you know what what is going to help me actually take some time off over Christmas? And I still feel like every morning I probably like like you said on holiday probably put an hour in or something just to chip away at something to keep things tidying over. I think I find it a lot easier to turn off than you because you're like like when you said oh the just in case and I'm like yeah but there is nothing that is. In our business, realistically, unless you have like uploaded the wrong book for sale, mm. there is actually nothing that can't wait. Nothing. We feel the pressure because it's our business. But realistically, that cover designer could have waited for a day. You were moving <laughs> house, Dan. You did not need to reply. It was like, a 30-second email. <laughs> yeah. And it's, but it's the mental... That's the thing. Like, it feels like if because like you say you're you're yourself you're pushing forward it's everything rests on you so it does feel like if you take your foot off the gas that there's a fear that everything's going to slow down no and but that, I, there's taking your foot off the gas for i see i don't think resting is taking your foot off the gas i think you can take a, a week's break or two weeks break and that's not necessarily taking your foot off the gas for, for a couple of reasons the first one is that usually we have things like ads running in the background that will you know sustain the passive income secondly um nothing is urgent and thirdly um two weeks is not enough to cripple our business this year has showed me that that two weeks i have 
for eight months this year, I have worked under insane conditions and it has not crippled my business. So taking off, you know, I, I took, I know because of how many times I go away and the fact that I turn off during those times, like nothing, there is nothing, you know, and that's why on Wednesday I was like, okay, I'm out, I'm done. Like, and I just backed off mm. because I was like, clearly that's what my body needs. I just have to stop. And I am, I am really okay with doing that. Like I know I can just back off and do you know what? Yeah. My, is my inbox full? Yeah. It's fucking bulging, but can those people wait? Yeah, they can, you know, like, oh, well, I'm going to come back and I'm going to have a really big inbox, but so what? Because I, you know, I had to rest and nobody died and nothing is really that urgent. Mm. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know. I, I think one thing that I do have to do that's going to help, and it's, I've already sort of started it, is uh, I'm I'm sort of writing a comprehensive list of like everything because generally I'm just I'll, I'll put a bullet point that's like an umbrella bullet point. It's got lots of bits in between it. But what I have been working on sort of uh, yesterday and a bit of today is actually like a full list of everything I could be working on, everything that like needs to has a deadline for whatever reason. Um, and then I'm kind of navigating my way around that. And one thing that I am doing as well uh, is. I'm stopping new projects in terms of like my fiction and just clearing up the old ones. Cause I've got like audiobooks in production. I've got a book that's half edited that I need to get done. And because it's, it's, you know, it's another product I can put out very, very soon. Um, so I've got lots of things sort of like just ticking over in the background, but I think just naturally, cause I've never been that good at being organized and to do lists and remembering everything. I think that's probably the reason that I'm always switched on is because I'm always like, what have I forgotten? Yeah. I also think, you say that you're not organized. I think you are organized. You managed to run um, a six or seven month long monthly release without having written the books and you got all of the things on the deadlines. Like, I think you are undervaluing yourself there. Oh, what a surprise. There's a theme. You undervaluing yourself. That's almost like a thing I've never said before ever. Um, Thanks for joining what... us for this. Was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What was I going to say? Um, oh, yeah. So financially, I think when you have enough passive income that you know what you're going, or you know it's very likely that you're going to earn X amount, that also enables you to relax a bit more. Like I definitely would have, like if we were in the, if this had happened a year ago, I probably would have had a nervous breakdown by now mm. because I didn't have the amount of guaranteed passive income that I have. Yeah. Um, and then obviously I've got freelance stuff that comes in on top. So I think the more your income grows in your business, the easier it becomes to take that time off as well. So like I, I, I do, I do get it. And I definitely think, yeah, I definitely think each month that my income grows, I am finding it easier to, to be able to let go because there's just that constant fear and pressure of you must earn enough to pay the mortgage or there is for me anyway so makes sense yeah cool awesome so how are we leveling up our business i am going to fill my creative well this week and that's it i'm not agreeing to anything else <laughs> Fair. yeah i've got um a deadline for next friday for a project so that's gonna just be mine yeah like i i am even really tempted to take the whole of next week off like i'm i'm not gonna say that i'm doing that because i would rather take the christmas week off yeah. Yeah, um yeah. but i am definitely acutely aware that i need to do some reassessing of timelines and things i think but that's not what i'm agreeing to basically my priority at the moment is to input as much as humanly possible mm. Awesome. Uh, so our audience question of this week is, as an indie author, how do you plan for time off and rest? Remember, if you want to get involved in the Next Level Authors Challenge, go over to facebook.com slash groups slash Next Level Authors. And uh, until next week, we will see you for now. Bye -bye. bye. Bye. Hungry for more? If you enjoyed this podcast, you can hear more of my angelic accent and Dan's dulcet tones on our other podcasts. For more of me, check out the Great Writer Share podcast. For more of me, listen to the Rebel Author podcast. We'll be back next week holding each other to account as Dan and Sasha become Next Level Authors. Let's wet the whistle. <laughs> Let's just leave that as the... Uh... <laughs> it's completely context-free.